First of all, I want to thank our pastors for the opportunity. And Pastor Bob, I'm telling you that we're all standing in agreement that this procedure has worked to perfection. It's done. In Jesus' name, it's done. I'm so thankful for what God has done for me and my family, what his word has done. And, and, and that's what I want to, to drive home today is that if we'll renew our mind to what this says, we can see miracles, abounding miracles in our families, in our church, in the world that we live in. You know, Greg was talking about the, the uh, camera. That's the only good thing that COVID done. He's made every church in the, in the country a televangelist. I mean, you can't get on Facebook without seeing a message about thus saith the word of God. And that, that's something that just thrills me to my heart. To know it. Let's pray. Father I praise you and I thank you God for your word. Lord I praise you for your precious Holy Spirit that leads and guides me. Lord touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Speak through me. That I might forever give you all the praise. And the glory for it all. In Jesus holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be taking my scriptures today. And. Out of Romans, the 12th chapter, and the second verse. I don't know if he's going to put that up there on the screen or not. But I'm going to be reading out of the King James. That's All my Bibles are the King James. But I'm going to, I'm going to read also the Amplified Classic and the uh, New Living Translation of this verse. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now let me, let me read this in the, uh, the New Living Translation and the Amplified. I, I want you to get this, get this down in your heart. It says, don't copy the behaviors. This is the New Living Translation. It says, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The Amplified Classic says, Be not conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude. So that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. I want to make a statement. I tell the guys at the jail a lot about this. But God don't need convincing of what his word says. There's not a doubt in my mind. He does not mean one fraction of anything convinced to what his word says. You know who needs convincing? We do. Every one of us. To be transformed, I looked it up. And, and, and this is something that, that I didn't know. You know, I, I read the, the, Greek tra uh, the, translation, the Greek translation, and I'm not a scholar. You can tell by the way I speak, I'm not a scholar. But I read the Greek trans translation, and every commentary that I read, it always referred back to the metamorphosis, and that's where we get our, uh, that word from, from the Greek definition. But it always referred back to a caterpillar morphing into a butterfly, being transformed into what God originally made it to be. Now, I want you to get this and understand where I stand. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I didn't come up in church. I didn't start going to church till me and my wife was married for two or three years. 
So I didn't have it ingrained into to me like some of you have had. You've, you've been in church your entire life. I had a lot of doubt and fear and unbelief. And it wasn't religious doubt, fear, and unbelief. It was just plain old carnal junk to wash out of me. I mean, it's taken literally years for me to do, to get all that junk out of me. I've had to just push my way out of relationships because I, it was constant. It's a constant worry and fret. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? The devil, he will wear you out if you let him. But when you come to the understanding of what he wants to do to transform you into what you are meant to be, what every person, under the sound of my voice, every person that's lit watching this on, on Facebook, what you are meant to be. And it is not full of fear and doubt and, and, and doubt, just doubting the whole, the whole picture that God has painted for you. When I come to understand that to be transformed, I looked, I looked this up. I read about the monarch caterpillar, which turns into the monarch butterfly. And the Lord, the Lord asked me a question. He said, does that butterfly or does that caterpillar have a choice? And I found out that there was a key ingredient in that caterpillar's life that if it didn't get that key ingredient, it never would form into a butterfly. And that's just a plant. It's, just, it's called milkweed. And the adult uh, butterfly lays its eggs in milkweed, and those caterpillars feed on that. It feeds on that, and, and that caterpillar will not morph into a butterfly without that key ingredient, without the the ingredient that God has placed here on this earth for it to have to do what it's supposed to do, to, to grow into what it's supposed to be. Well, the Word of God is the same way in a Christian's life. We can, I, I struggled for the biggest part of my adult life into my mid-40s because I did not understand that I could believe this Word like the sun comes up in the east. I didn't realize that. I'd never been around anybody that just were solid. I was around a bunch of people that says, yeah, but what if? You want to get me to preach you a sermon, just say that about something that right there says because I will, I'll tell you where, where I have been and what God has done in my life to be able to look back over my life. Now, this is something. This is, this is faith instilled through the truth in God's Word. To be able to look back over your life and see all the things that God has brought you through unscathed. I tell, I tell people all, all, over, all over town. I've rode through hell on a wick, in a wicker basket and come out on the other side with a, not even the smell of smoke on me. And it's not because I'm something special. It's because he's something special. He's faithful. I'm going to tell you a little story. I had a, a friend years ago, me and... Brother David was talking about it earlier, and, and I used to shoot quite a bit. And a friend of mine called me, and he said, will you sight my rifle in? He was going to Colorado to hunt elk. I said, sure. So we went down the gun range, and I, I set it in, sighted it in, had it shooting really good. We left. A week or two later, he goes to Colorado fires that gun four times and the stock broke and blinded him. Shooting the same box of ammo, the same gun that I had had shooting just weeks before that. I mean, he's blind today. That could have easily been me. 
I had a, a, uh, a friend that dropped a bulldozer out at my property, and me and another friend was working, just piling up rocks and, and cleaning things up. Now, this is talking about God being faithful. You can count on what this says. Understand this. And uh, we were just piling rocks up. The day before the incident, I had to put napkins in my ears. This cage on this bulldozer was so loose that it was rattling and hurting my ears. The next day, we came back up there early that morning, and me and another friend went off down in the woods, and Tyler got on this, this bulldozer. Now, this is... God is faithful. He watches over his children. Tyler's probably 6'3", 270. That morning he got on that bulldozer and he said, I was just going along on flat ground. He said, I didn't put it in a bind. I didn't get nothing wrong with it. That cage came off of that bulldozer, hit him under his arm, and wiped him off of that bulldozer. He said, I woke up looking at the blue sky with this bulldozer bumping against this cage. And it had old flat swamp pads on it. If it had cleats and it had been ribbed up, it had climbed up on that cage and possibly killed him. It probably would have hurt me really bad because I'm half his size. And it wiped him off that bulldozer like it was, he was a deck of cards. That's the faithfulness. That God can, can, he'll do it for everybody to stand in that. I've had three-point hitches break on a tractor and the bush hog knock the fender off and hit me in the, in the, in the shoulder. If I'd have rolled two more feet, it'd wipe me off the tractor. The faithfulness of God. Now, when we look at all the, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, these, those, those are just, very few incidents, as I, I can tell you, and I can sit here and talk about it all day long, how God has been faithful to me wherever I was. Because he called me to preach in my early 20s. And I allowed religion and man's traditions to push me away. Never again. You know why? Because God is faithful. And his word has cleansed my mind. I, and I want to ask Brother Jason if he can run this video. This, the Lord gave me a, an, just run it, and I'll talk while it's running. He gave me this illustration years ago, and I've used it in the jail for, for, a, lot, for a long time. But this ain't nothing but a, a vase, and that's coffee. And that... That water run, running into that coffee pot is a representation of God's Word. Now, you want a renewed mind? This is what, this is what God's Word can do. This, this video is 5 minutes and 30 seconds. It's not long at all. But this is an illustration. I'm going to tell you a funny story. I woke up one morning, and I'd been telling the guys for years, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to use an aquarium, and... And I'm going to do all this. And I was about to make a mess in my house. I was about to build this big old frame across the tub and put this big aquarium up there. And Missy walks in there and says, uh, won't you just use a jar? <laughs> and uh, this is what I came up with. But what this represents is all the junk that we all know all about. The world can pack your head full. Renewed mind. A renewed, a renewed mind to the truth. I'm talking about the truth of what God says and not what this world wants to tell you. The, the thoughts that Satan will put in your mind, this is the dirty dog that he is. He will put a, a thought in your mind and push you and push you. And as long as, as long as you're trying to deal with him mentally, he'll beat you every time. But when you start speaking the truth in what this book says, over that, this begins to happen. You can see this clearing. 
You can see that, clear, that, that this coffee being diluted and pushed out. I, I'm not telling you I do anything special, but I make it a point when I read this God's Word that I read it out loud because faith comes by hearing. And there is nothing in this world that can cleanse your mind and your heart as, as much as hearing what God's Word says, regardless of what you see. I've stood up, and if y'all have ever been to my house, I've stood up on that hill and thought, Lord, what am I going to do? I know I need to do something, but I don't know what. For months, probably over a year, the only thing he would give me was Exodus 14, 13. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I stood on that for months. And I watched God work through things that I never in a million years would have thought that he had worked the way he did. I never thought in a million years that I would be preaching as much as I am all the places that I am. I never thought in a million years, if, if you would have asked me what I would be doing 10 years ago, it sure wouldn't have been doing this. But my God is faithful. His, his gifts and callings are without repentance. And what he has called you to do, he has called you to do it. And I promise you, if you will renew your mind to what this word says and stand on it, come hell or high water, stand on what God's word says. This is what will happen. This is what you'll see happen in your mind because I promise you, the world will, th will throw so much junk into, you, into your head that you will start disagreeing with your born-again spirit. Your born-again spirit knows all about what's going on. But until we get our minds renewed to the truth in this book and start hearing ourselves say this, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask people to raise their hand, but I'm just going to tell you something that I know without a shadow of a doubt that there's not a man or woman sitting in this church or watching on the online that your opinion don't mean more to you than anybody else's on this planet. I, I, I can say that. My opinion means more to me than anyone's. So, so if I am speaking... God's word, God's truths, where I can hear them. Faith comes by hearing. The most important vo voice in your life is your own. And when you start speaking what God's word says, I'm not talking about saying it silently in your head, but I'm talking about speaking God's word over situations where you can hear it. He don't need convinced. We do. We do. And he's given us everything we need to ever overcome anything that the world will throw at you. It's, it's a free gift. All you have to do is use it. And you can't help but look at what, I mean, the, the perfect example. You can turn that off now. The perfect example is with Jesus when the devil tempted him. He didn't get mad and cry and spit and, and, and throw rocks. He said, it is written. It is written. The devil can't stand against truth. Silent prayer. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't see it lifting you out when you're arguing mentally with the devil. He will beat you. But when you start speaking, when you start speaking to that mountain, that problem, what's it say? Have faith in God. Said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he said. Now, I didn't say that. 
God said that. Numbers 23, 19 says he's, God is not a man that he should lie. Is he going to repent for what he said? Absolutely not. Is what he said, is he not going to back it up? Absolutely. I've made it a point and made my mind up that I'm going to believe God's word above all opinion. Above, above all else, I'm going to see the end, a victorious end of my Christian life. And I'm going to stand and watch, I mean watch mountains removed out of my life because I've got faith in God and I'm going to speak that truth and allow him to do what he has said he will. People, we live in a day that if you sit around and watch TV long enough, i done this in 2013. 2013, I watched the news and I, I, I run all over creation for a lot of years and and tried to get involved in politics and, and help, you know, candidates. And, and went to, I went to Asheville, North Carolina one time for a candidate. and Never been so disappointed in my life trying to help somebody change things. But I sat for, in 2013 and watched a major news station till I was so full of junk that uh, there, there was no help. I finally just, when we moved out here where we live, I turned cable off. I ain't going to watch it. I mean, I'm not, I, I watch TV, but I ain't going to watch a bunch of lies. I ain't going to watch a bunch of junk that's going to draw me away from what thus saith the word. Because this word will carry you through things that Ten years ago would have broke me, would have destroyed me. I'm not at liberty to tell you all the things that God has brought us through, but I'm going to tell you this, that we've seen miracles in our family. We have loved our son, cared for him. And watched him stagger around for a lot of years. But when me and her and her sister stood in our house and agreed out loud that no harm was going to come against him. He is out in the world and his testimony is not mine to tell. But he is out in the world. And we all stood in her office and agreed that no harm was going to come against him. And one of these days, he was going to turn around into something that we were going to be so proud of. And it wasn't months. It just months, months when we took authority over that spirit that's pushing that kid and stood on, he's ours. He's ours. And we stood on faith in God. And I, today... We went and saw him at Thanksgiving. He said, it's got to get down in your knower. I like to run around the place. I mean, just winds me up to think what God has done in that child's life. He has changed 180 degrees. He's just, he's not even the same human being. And that it's because he's constantly getting fed, fed, and every time he writes a letter, it's full of scriptures, and he said, I never knew I could be so happy, never knew that I could stand and, and, and just, just be content and, be, and wake up of a morning and be happy to be here. Well, you know what I'm saying? We've all lived through those, those times. I spent almost a dozen years in a drunken stupor because I didn't know that I could count on God's word like I could count on the sun coming up in the east. All I'd ever been taught is hope and pray, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That ain't faith. That ain't faith. That's religion. I don't want no part of it. 
I want to instill in you today, if you will renew your mind and pour this word into you, hear it. Hear it regardless of what's going on around you. If you have to get ear earplugs and, and stick them in your ears. I spent three years in a bubble. If you've been to my home, that bubble's right there in front of the house. I spent three years with earphones in my ears. And every day I could tell that it was washing all that world out of me. I've, I've had people say, that thing's an eyesore. Won't you tear it down? And I'm in the process of, of, of taking it down. Not because of them, because it's time. But every time I've been taking it down a little at a time, and every time I walk in there, it brings back to my memory what God has done in me. In me. And what he's willing to do in every man, woman, and child that will believe him. People, there, there, there's more, more reasons than, than I've got time to explain to you why you should believe what God's Word says. Because a thousand years from now, that's the only thing that's going to matter. I, I'm telling you, this, this life that we live here on this earth is just, just a, like that, and it's gone. The only thing that's going to matter is what we've done with God. What we've done with his word. If you want to live a victorious, strong Christian life, renew your mind. Be transformed. Be transformed through, the, through all the junk that goes on around us. You can be changed into what God created you to be. And that is a strong, strong faith-filled, bold Christian to be able to stand up and when, when things come against you, say, no, that ain't happening. That's a lie and I'm not going to receive that lie. I'm going to tell you, devil, what the, the, what the word says about this situation. And I'm going to stand on it and go with it. And you can too. See, that's, that's, that's the great thing about what God's Word said. Peter said it. He said, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. What, what He will do in my life, what He'll do in our pastor's life, He'll do in your life. He will do, and he will do that for you regardless, regardless of how you feel if you'll just believe Him. If you'll just step out and believe Him. When I first started in 2000, the end of 2014, a man that helped me build that greenhouse, he said, you need to uh, find, find uh, Charles Capps. If anybody ever listens to Charles Capps, he's big on speech. First, first preacher that I'd ever heard talk like that. He said, you're going to have what you say. He made the statement, he said, Jesus didn't say this. Because he didn't want you to go that route. But he said the, the negative things in life, if you're believing them in your heart, you're the, the very one that's creating that monster in your life. Because you, you, whatever you say with your mouth and believe here, you're going to have it. And I thought, Lord, help. I'm my world's, I'm, I'm my biggest enemy. Because I was constantly... Speaking, that's all, that's all my mind was full of, was doubt and fear and worldliness. I went to church. I'd done the best I knew how. But if I hadn't got into a group of people that stood up and says, no, I ain't receiving that. This is what the Word says. I told a man here a while back, if I hadn't... Hadn't have left where I was at and went into a church that believed this book. I said, I've been backslid today because I had no hope in that religion. There's hope in God. You know what? You know what biblical hope is? Biblical hope is faith all the way around. It's a confident 
expectation that what you say is going to come to pass. And if you're speaking what God says, there ain't nothing in this world can take it away from you because God's what he's going to back it up from now on if you'll stand in it and believe it and understand without a shadow of a doubt that he's for you. Regardless of where you stand, he's for you. I've got a picture that I, that I use quite, quite often. And it's a picture of, a, of an old gray-headed man. It's, it's a picture. It's a two-part picture. The top of it's an old gray-headed man with his staff in his hand and menacing looking and flames around him. And that's what, that's what the world thank God, thinks God is. Some bipolar old man sitting on his throne with a hammer in one hand and a lightning bolt in the other just waiting for somebody to screw up so he can clobber them, right? That's the world's depiction of God. And the sad thing about it, that's religion's depiction of God. But on the bottom, that's the reason my podcast is named The Prodigal Son. If you've ever seen one, you're looking at him. But on the bottom of that picture, it shows a man bent over with a little kid running to him. That's God. That's the love of God. That's the merciful, gracious Father that we all serve. There was a guy, I give out a little card at the jail. It's got 190-something in him scripture study. It's a, we've been in this study since June of last year. But I walked into a pod the other day, and, and uh, this guy had his little card, and he's marking them off as he goes through them. And he was just finishing when I walked into the pod. And he, I mean, he, you could tell it was all over, written all over his face, he had accomplished that. He went through these whole, all these scriptures. He said, I just finished. I said, now go back and go through them again. And he kind of looks at me. I said, you know, we leak, right? He said, what? I said, we leak. I said, a constant flow of God's word. Now, whether it's reading it and studying it and going through it or meditating on it, but you always got to be you got to be putting God's word toward what you're going, what you're dealing with. And if you're not reading it, you're meditating on it. If you're not meditating on it, you're looking at situations on how can I put God's word work to work in this situation. That's a renewed mind. That's a renewed mind. When you when you when you come up in, in a situation, I don't know if anybody knows Alan Crider, but I started at the jail. With him. Never met him before in my life. Terry called me and said, will you help us? I said, sure. She said, Alan wants to meet you. So I went and met him. I mean, I love that man. He's, he's been so good to me. Just holding me up. Praying for me. But I sat down in the, in the, in the visitation place over there. And he said, now look. He said, I don't want to speak any fear into you. He said, I don't want to speak any fear into you, but he said, I want you to pay attention in here. He said, there's some bad people in this jail. He said, watch what you're doing. You know what came up in me? Just as soon as he said it, and I knew he wasn't trying to do anything other than let me know I needed to watch what I was doing. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Holy Spirit had something here that he could use. I can go in that jail. I go in there by myself. I, I make it a point not to take anybody with me because I want, I want to be able to go in there and, and minister and move freely without having to worry about somebody behind me, you know, needing help or, hey, they're getting a fight. And, and before you know it, you got one you're going to have to drag, drag out in the middle of it. But I go in there by myself, and I have yet, I've seen, I've seen some major, major malfunctions in that jail. But I've never once had one inkling of fear. Why? 
because my God made a way and he's going to watch my back while I'm walking in it. Why? Because his word says so. Isaiah 52, 12. Let me go. I can't quote that one. I'm going to have to go back over here and read it. I read this verse all the time. It's more than a comfort to me. This Bible's new, so I usually use my phone or an iPad. Isaiah 52, 12. It says, For ye shall not go out with, with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will, will be your rear guard. King James says rear reward. Other translation says your rear guard. And the Lord spoke to my heart, and he told me, he said, son, he said, I'm going to open doors. You just walk through them. I got you back while you're walking. Don't look back. I ain't never looked back. I ain't looking back. I'm going to walk through every door that God opens for me to proclaim his goodness, his graciousness, his love for every man, woman, and child. I don't care what they have done. God loves them. I was coming out of Chatsworth, Georgia years ago. I'm talking about year, 25 years ago. And up until a couple of years ago, that picture I call it some people call it a vision but God showed me a man standing in the middle of a river about knee deep the, some of the most crystal clear water that you've ever seen and this man was dehydrated and, and malnourished to the point it didn't look like he could take a step and for 25 years I thought that man was a lost man I did I, I thought he was just a man that refused to take of the water of life freely. But I walked out of my garage and was halfway across the, across the yard one day. And the Lord spoke to me. Oh, like I say, this is 25 years ago. He said, that man wasn't a lost man. And just as soon as he said it, I knew what he was talking about. Just as soon as he said it, I knew he was talking about that man in that river. He said, that man wasn't a lost man. He said, that man was a religious man that refused to believe what I have written down for him to stand in. If you want God to be real in your life, make this the focal point of your life. If you struggle, there's relief. Cast all that struggle on him. Put that struggle on somebody that's shoulders are broad enough to carry it. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm going to make a statement that will ring a lot of religious people's bells. If it ain't easy and it ain't light, it ain't God. If you don't have peace in your heart about what's going on, if something's driving you, the devil drives. The devil pushes. The devil pressures. I've, ne I've never had it, God speak to me any, any more real than just a year ago, I guess, I run up the, up, up the road on my tractor, and my daddy's German shepherd ran out in front of me. And she looked back over her shoulder, like, come on, I'll take you to the house. She's a shepherd. That's her job. And the Lord, <laughs> he just, I mean, just ministered to me through that old dog. He said, I, well, that's what I want to do in your life is to lead you and to guide you and to help you through every aspect of your life. And I've given you this book to use to see it done. 
I've heard people all my life, all my adult life, stand up before congregations like this and say, I want God's will to be done in my life. But yet I've never seen them stand up and proclaim the truth over what they're dealing with. All they know to do is to beg and plead and ask God to do what he's already done or ask him to do what he's told them to do. A lot of prayer is wasted air. If he's told you to do it, he's not going to back up. He'd be a liar if he did. What, he's to, what he has already done, he's not going to redo it. God wants us to stand on what he has given us to believe. We either believe it or we don't. To have a renewed mind, you, you, I'm telling you, a renewed mind is steadfast in standing and saying, I ain't moving. Psalms 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or the world, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate. Day and night. And what does it say? The third verse, it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his, his uh, fruit in his season. Greg's talking about that the other day. He said, You ever tried to dig up a tree that's got plenty of water? It's awful. And it is. You can't dig it up. You can't kill a tree like that without cutting it down. That's what God wants to do in your life. He wants to get you so rooted and grounded in that that nothing in this world will ever come against you and change your mind that this is not true. And he can do that. He can, he can, he can renew your mind to the point of every little thing that comes up, those little things that used to trip you up, make you lose your mind. They just, they're like flies, just go away. Nothing to you anymore. Why? Because your mind's renewed to what God has written down for you to believe. And he wants to, he wants to do that for everyone that's willing, that's willing to believe him. He will do that. He wants us to stand in that. Now, I'm going I'm I'm to uh, do one thing, and then I'm going to wrap this up. What I'm talking about today is a renewed mind which produces faith. Now, the faith that I'm talking about is a solid determined faith that everyone sitting in the sound of my voice right now now this is a carnal way of looking at it so we understand but every one of you was an example of that faith today there's not a person in here standing right you came into that and you say well how what are you talking about every one of you was an example of that of faith, strong faith. You came in here and you sat down in those chairs and didn't think one thing about one of them falling out from under you and you hitting the floor. I walked into a pod one day over at the jail. Big old guy, he runs and grabs one of them chairs and the ones that really want, want something, they're, they're, they make sure they got a seat. And he, sat, he slid that chair up right here beside me, and he sat down. And when he did, I heard a big crash, and all fours were sticking up in there and him laying on his back. I said, man, you all right? He's grin, I kind of grinned and got up and got him another chair. I said, you all right? He said, yeah. I said, that chair let you down, didn't it? He said, yeah. I said, God will never do that to you. You are an example 
That's a carnal example of just sitting down and you didn't even think about it. It was, you, you, didn't, no, you didn't even have a, a, an inkling and a, and a doubt that those chairs wasn't going to hold you up. Now, renew your mind to what this says so that the things that so easily beset you, the things that when they come up, distracts you so much that you forget what this says. Renew your mind to the clarity of the last part of that video so you get all, that, all the world out and all the doubt and the fear and the unbelief. You can walk through this life and be what God tr wants to transform you to be. And that's a vessel in this world that everyone can use I'm talking about that God can use you in every aspect of your life. He can't use us when we're constantly in need and, and worry and fret over something that he said he'd take care of. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs. I don't care what need it may be, but that's a proclamation that, that we all need to stand on. Because when we get that settled in our heart, then when we go out here in this world, we talk to somebody on the phone, we've got a, a, a friend or a family member that, that needs help, we have got enough here and here agreeing together that you can be a vessel that God can speak through and help. I can't do it all. Our pastors can't do it all. It's up to us to be that light in this world because, honey, I'm going to tell you something. We're not out of sinners to preach to. We're not out of places to preach. We're not, we're not out of anything but time. Time. I said in the early 90s, how in the world can this world get any worse? My Lord. Thousandfold over to what it was then. I don't see how God hadn't come back already. It's his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. Renew your mind to what God wants you to live in. And that is the truth of what he has said. The truth. Brother Lee, would you come up and dismiss us? I, I want to I wanna ask you a question today. I always do this on my podcast uh, I want to ask you to, to do this. Think about what I'm asking you. Is Jesus your Lord? I'm looking at this camera because I want everybody that's watching this and will watch it years later to understand that God will be your best friend. I found in my short 53 years that there's nothing in this world that God won't do for us if we'll just believe him. You may be in a position that you think you could never, ever overcome what you're, what you're going through. That's a lie of the devil, and don't you believe it. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want to invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. And if he is Lord of your life, find out what this book says about you. Who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And if today you have given Jesus Christ your heart and your life and made him Lord... Find out what his word says, what God's word says, and stand in it. Come hell or high water, stand in it. And believe it over and above anything that the devil wants to lie to you and tell you any different. God wants to be your Lord and your Savior, your help. Someone that you can count on when everybody else has turned their back on. I'm a walking example of that. 
of what God can do if we'll just renew our hearts and our minds to what His truth said. Go ahead, brother.